Shroom Tech. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. What, hallucinogenic or just No, no, no. <laughs> just just like well that's the immune. That's the Shroom Tech immune. Oh, different shrooms. Yeah. I used to take that whenever I was travelling. Keep okay. my immune system up. Oh really? It is really good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why well, do you get yeah. it when you travel? Well, air con and stuff. Yeah, and, just yeah, air, yeah. air con and yeah. just, you know, different environments, different airports. You always get the sniffles, in it. Yeah. Yeah. Got That's where I got the first COVID, travelling back from New Zealand. No, was it? Yeah. Was that Hooker against Felder? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, but, these, but these keep you safe. Eh? Hey? These keep they you do, safe. They do, honestly, they do. Yeah, they are good. Okay. <laughs> See, you can do the sponsorings. Oh, yeah. Look at you. You're going to have to move that a bit closer, I reckon. Shroom tech. <laughs> Keep your immune system strong. <laughs> Don't get COVID uh, like Dan Hardy. <laughs> yeah, for real. I, it was, yeah. I was traveling back from New Zealand. And I, was, I remember because I, I came through uh, um, Abu Dhabi and everybody was wearing a mask. And like, there's normally a lot of people at airports wearing a mask. I'm like walking around like, what the fuck? I even tweeted out like, these fucking dickheads all wearing masks or something. Just, like, dust, a lot of people wearing dust masks, to be fair. Yeah. And, I'm, and I, I remember tweeting it. And then when I got back to the UK, there was this kind of mild conversation about COVID. Right. And then I flew out to Brazil. So that long before, was it? Yeah. So basically, you were patient zero. You brought, Pretty much. You brought, I was, probably, you, you I was brought, probably seven or eight. I yeah. travelled it around the world from New so Zealand. you brought COVID back from New Zealand. Yeah. Intoxicated the UK. Yeah. Yeah. And then just sh- sprinkled a bit in Brazil there for we go. good measure. There we go. Just doused it around. Yeah. <sighs> Usually good with big things in front of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. brilliant. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Okay. Do I sit like this? I've got to get comfy. Man. No, you, you can you can move it if you need yeah. to. You Close can. If to you sit table, back and you, you just... amateurs. Is this recording as well? Are we on. Oh shit. <laughs> amateurs. Hang on. I'm, yeah. Well, no, we are amateurs because I'm not even organised here. I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping you've watched some of the fights. I'm still trying. To... We're talking about fights, are we? I think so. Okay. All right. I, get I just need 10 a, minutes of revision. So I need topology good. pulled up because that's the order that we work. Make to. sure I can see the screen as well. I might have to keep going on my phone. This screen? Yeah, tilt it a bit like before. Oh, okay. We'll share it. Okay. I maybe should have brought the computer. Right. There you go. Do you think? Do Too you busy think. thinking about what I'm using it for to even think about bringing it there to There we go. There we go. Again, amateurish. <laughs> well, I can show you the record if it needs be. Yeah, I've got it here that's as right. well. Okay. How are you, Jimmy? Oh no, I need to do spot. Oh, I'm all, I'm all off. I'm all uh, twisted. On. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Don't Hang for, on a minute. Don't forget. <laughs> oh Jesus! Now I'm knocking stuff. Okay, I need to get an handle on this. You've got it. I've got it. Okay. <sighs> oh Jesus! <laughs> What's going on here? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Outlaw Picks podcast. Today, I'm joined, joined by Jimmy Waller. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Rogan and saying uh, um, uh, Namagamedov's name the other no, day? No, oh, please, mate, no. it was a clip. No, what? it was a clip. <laughs> he went, ladies and gentlemen, come here, come here. And he just no. and he like trailed off. It was fucking, it. it got shared Did around. I'll have to send it to you, poor old Rogan. I've done it myself. I've done it myself. Yeah, I yeah. called Gunnar Nelson Rick Story once. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Was I didn't good. know that yeah. was going After he just got beaten by Rick Story by decision. Yeah, ah. bad, bad that. Um, uh, today we're sponsored by uh, Unbound Marina, which you don't have any Unbound Marina. We'll have to get you some. I managed to get my hat back from V, my lovely uh, uh, Merino wool hoodie. You've got to check stuff out. UnboundMerino.com. If you use the code OUTLAW, you'll get 15% off. And if you spend over $100, you'll get free shipping in the US. Make sure you check out Unbound Marino. And the other sponsor is our good friends at XBrain. Um, they've upgraded my code. So if you use the code OUTLAW, you will now get 20% off. Ooh. And that includes uh, collagen, mate. That's good for your joints yeah, at our yeah. age. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've yeah. got this Neuroptimax, which I'm just going to pass on to Jimmy because that's your caffeine drink. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, Onnit supplements, all of your Onnit products, Alpha Brain, uh, Shroom Tech, and whatever else you need. So xbrain.co.uk, use the code OUTLAW, you'll get 20% off. You've got a concern about this, haven't you? Because you yeah, let's just state this now, isn't it? So basically, beat your alanine gives me an itchy bum hole, oh, and I grow a bit red and get itchy skin in that. What? So Where's if I start doing this, that? I, I don't know. That's as technical as I get, Dan. You know this. It, it gives me itchy bum hole. There you go. Well, it concerns me that you might have been applying the beta alanine. You're going to pull up your ass, right? <laughs> I was just about to drop my trousers. Is that, is that wrong? <laughs> I'm sure it's beta alanine. It gives me that, that you know that tingly. Is it? Yeah. yeah it seems to. Yeah. Go to what, was the one, what was the one I, I was using? Ooh. Made me smell a fish. 
Oh, yeah, L-carnitine. Carnitine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Bad one, On it. weight camps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, weight cuts, fight yeah, yeah. camps. Yeah, I remember yeah. it. Yeah. Why was I taking that? Who told me to take that? that was, was, it that... Fat, was it fat, fat loss? Is that a I guy? Think so, yeah. Is that guy Ollie's friend? Phil Richards. Had taking about, was it Ollie's friend? Yeah, yeah. He had taking about a million tablets yeah, a day. I was taking like 78 yeah. tablets a day. All them green and brown ones. Like I, had a, yeah. I had a green drink in the morning. I had a clay drink in the morning. It was like like salty seawatery algae. It was, it was good, right? I'll tell you what they taste like. You'll remember these. You remember um, ice poles? The yeah, long, yeah. like 10p yeah, ones. Yeah. Right, yeah. the ones that you used to suck and cut the sides of your mouth on the no, side of the yeah, plastic. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. That's Very exactly nice. what it tastes like. Very Lovely. Good. Uh, yeah, they're really good. Neuroptimax, you can get it from X Brain. Definitely worth checking out. There you go. Um, yeah, I'll get you a tub of the pre workout stuff as well. Yeah, it nice. Is really yeah, good. yeah. You really sniff good. that, or do you drink it? You only only drink it okay. as far as I know. I mean, I'll try. I'll well, try. <laughs> <bit of both. laughs> Give it both. Looks. No wonder you're Sit. getting itchy bum hole. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We talk about UFC London today, and the mm-hmm. reason why Jimmy is special guest is because it's UFC London. And it's a special and card, I, and I know one or two fighters. You know one or two fighters on the card. <laughs> so it, it, you'll you'll know Jimmy is from Rough House and Censored from his epic MMA career around the world, international MMA legend. Come on, mate. I mean, <sighs> international flopper. But there you go. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Anyway. Um, UFC London. So we'll get into it mm. from the bottom of the card, shall we? So you've yeah. done all your research, haven't you? You're well on. You're well on this. I mean, I've spent hours. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of time. I'm surprised um, you didn't contact Ollie and have him send his notes. No, nah, no. Nah. But you see, but again, we, we mentioned this earlier when we were chatting. I can just fall back on. He's got a good jab. <laughs> He's twitchy. And then if ever in doubt, if you see me do this, guys, I ain't got a fucking clue what Dan's on about. So if you see me, so if you see me do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna do that, and that's the cue. So no, Jimmy ain't signal. got a clue what the fuck Dan's saying. <laughs> that's right? I'm just gonna right, nod, right, nod right. and hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. There you go. So that's my uh, that's my plan. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so first one is Jai Herbert against Ilya Taporia. Mm-hmm. So Jai is renegade. He's tall, rangy. He is uh, eleven and three is his record. Taporia is eleven and zero. Lethal neck attacker. Mm-hmm. What are you saying? Rough fight for Jai. Yeah, yeah. We spoke about this earlier, didn't we? So this is at lightweight. Yeah. And this is Tapori. Is this his first fight at lightweight? Because it says it feather, right? Make sure, because that's what I was looking at, weren't it? Yeah, let me check. Yeah, this is a lightweight. So it's quite short. 5'7", is he? Or 5'9", is quite short, right? He is. He and Jai's... 5'7". Yeah. 5'7". Normally a featherweight. So what, yeah, yeah, is this why his why first one up? moving yeah, up? Why has he come up? Is it any... I don't know. No idea, no? He's had two cancelled bouts. So he's undefeated. At ah, Serbia. okay, okay, okay. Here's the answer then. So he was on the card for UFC 270 against Charles Jordan, and he missed weight, so he was removed from the fight. Oh, right, okay. So yeah. there you go. So that's why. So he's, I, I guess he's right at the top of the weight class, and mm-hmm. he's moved up. And then Jai on the other, so so he's 5'7", and then Jai on the other side is, six one, six, he's got to be, hasn't he? Six six he's one. got to be. Let me pull up his uh, comparison. I mean, Jai's going to keep it a distance, isn't he? Six mm. one. Mm. Yeah. So here's the stats. So Jai's six foot one compared to five eleven for Taporia. Five eleven or five seven? Uh, sorry, five seven. Yeah, sorry. Good memory, eh? Uh, God, that stuff's somewhere. kicking in it's already. Kicking yeah. in already. My arsehole's <laughs> starting. I'm fucking sharp. My arsehole's hurting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So okay, uh, Taporia's so. sixty nine inch reach and Jai's seventy seven. Yeah. So he's got an eight inch reach advantage as yeah. well. Yeah. So I mean. I mean, what do you do if you're in Jai's corner? What's your what's your recommendation? Well, you got to got to stay long on him, haven't you? And obviously, <laughs> Ollie says he uses the jab well. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, he's very true. He's got good feet, good lead hand, isn't he? Good straight punches, yep. good takedown defense. Um, but that is it is a tough fight. At Taporia was it eleven and 0? eleven and 0? Yep. yeah, hundred percent takedown defense. Jai's thirty yeah. percent is is his UFC stat. Yeah, he, he has got yeah he has got better takedown offense than that. I mean yeah. that's only based on his UFC fights, and he's had yeah. some rough ones. But Tapori's getting... grappling how, how strong, good. strong, very very strong. I mean just just constant neck attacks. I remember he was uh, he was on Cage Warriors fighting. Um, oh, what's his name? Anyway, he just put him to sleep. It was it was not. He didn't even have chance to tap. It was right. a, it was a very very quick, very very quick submission. He's just he's just got a strong neck attacks generally. I mean, mm. triangle, a couple of rear naked chokes, a couple of guillotines, an anaconda, then a triangle armbar, mm. and then he uh, yeah, so he had, and then he knocked somebody out in Brave, mm. and then joined the UFC, and he's had three fights in the UFC, but knocked every, knocked his last two opponents out. Yeah, went uh, the distance with Zalal, 
and then he knocked out uh, Damon Jackson and Ryan Hall. Did yeah. you see? I bet mean, you didn't see Gary Tonan get stopped. The other I day. did actually. I seen the finish. Fucking yeah, hell, yeah, that was on nasty, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. risky, isn't it? Very, very risky. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what's that sport. Uh, yeah, what's the sport? He um, he works the body well, doesn't he? he rips the yeah. body well. But again, he's getting to join it. Jai moves his feet well, and he plays that long game very well. Good jab, good right hand. He gets hit with the right hand a lot, doesn't he? As well, that's a point. That's what he does. I, I, I noticed. So yeah. Jai clips him. Obviously, getting to him. Jai can put him away. And I said, we've got to back the Brits, haven't we? But there's a couple of Brits who have got, got it really them. fucking yeah. hard on the night. And Jai is one of them. Yeah. I think, you know, I mean, a couple of the other ones are fable, fable to the Brits. But mm-hmm. Jai and... and, and He's only had hard fights, Jai has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've, the, they've only yeah. given him hard fights. I mean, yeah. Trinaldo was a, a was a rough one. Mm. So who's he got? Yeah. yeah, he had Trinaldo in his debut. Then they gave him Moicano. Yeah. That was a second round submission. I, I don't know. I mean, he's coming off that win over Karma Worthy, that first round knockout. But yeah. this is a different fight. I mean, he's the, he's going to constantly be thinking about Taporia closing him down to mm. take him down. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So he's probably going to be skirting the octagon, skirting the fence, trying to use his takedown defense against the fence instead of trying to wrestle out in the open, wouldn't you think? Although he's Taporia, I think he's, he's Taporia um, Greco. Is he upper body wrestling? Not sure. I don't know. I, I just I can see Jai kind of standing a bit tall up against the fence and trying to pick him off and time him. Yeah, but we and don't want to be against that cage. We've been no, speaking about really. this of late, haven't we? Yeah. As well, if you're going to be long player game, take it from the center and put them on the heels so you got a space behind you. Yeah. Time your counter shots, time your turns, and etc. In it. Yeah. It's a super tough fight for him. I'm going to go with Jai just because. He's British and I hope he can do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, him and maybe the main event as well. A couple of, a couple of tough fights. A couple of really ones. Real, I, real I tough think ones. he has. Yeah. What I are you saying? What are you thinking? I'm I am seeing him struggle to keep um Taporia away from him. Yeah. Cause it, cause I think because the thing is with Taporia, naturally he wants to close distance, and especially now he's he's the shorter fighter. He's there's gonna be no question about that. He's gonna want to be close to him, he's gonna want to take him down up against the fence, but most likely to get in on his legs and then take him away from the fence mm. to allow him to scramble out in the open. And yeah. that's when he'll clamp onto his neck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, make you know him go I mean? deep on the underhook yeah. or, or whatever to stand up. Yeah, I can see that happening. I can, yeah. I can see him I can see him catching Jai, unfortunately. I'd like yeah. to see, you know, but but at the same time I'm you know. I'm, I mean, I'm a big a, fan of Taporia. Yeah, I, I mean, it looks like I like the way he punches him, man. Like mm. ripping the body well and big power shots and yeah. just getting to Jai to do it, innit? Yeah. He has got a, a wicked overhand as well. Mm. There was a, se- a second round stoppage on his way into the UFC that was a big overhand. Right. It's almost like he kind of, where was it? Oh, no, it was, it was a first rounder still. Overhand, first round. He, he's, yeah. I mean, I, just, I, think he's, I think he's very dynamic. Mm. He was actually a bantamweight before, believe it or not. What, now he's all the way up to yeah. lightweight? So he made his debut at featherweight. He had a couple of fights at featherweight. Then he did a catchweight bout at 140. Then he fought at featherweight again. Then he fought at bantamweight. Fought in cage warriors at bantamweight against Brian Boulon. That was the fight I was thinking of. And that was an anaconda in minute 39. He was asleep before Goddard even realized. And then he went up to featherweight. Two fights in Brave and then three in the UFC. Now a lightweight. And now a lightweight. Shifting up the gears. Growing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a grown boy. He's a grown I mean, how boy. old is he? He's not very old. 25. 25. Oh, there you go. There yeah. You go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. When was he fighting? When did he have that fight at Batman? How many years ago? Uh, Fe- uh, February Batman. Bantam weight was 2018. So about four years. Four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. 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 Prop SNC coach. Found someone go. better than Ollie. And yeah. He's actually putting. <laughs> He's actually putting muscle on and progressing, so you fair know, play to Taporia. What, what you're going to find about this podcast is that there are a lot of Ollie fans in the comments. Oh, really? Like, so people gonna... often ask where he is. I've seen the know. ones who think that Ollie's me. There are Ollie's a lot of me. people that are glad that he's not here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, really? we see all those comments as well, especially when, you know, Jamie Orvey steals the show. But Really? What? Glad Ollie's yeah. gone? I think now he's you're here, though. I don't, I don't think they'll ever want to see, see, see or hear from Ollie again. Yeah? I just, you, you know, I get that feeling. We'll see in the yeah. comments. You let us know. You let us know. Um... So you so you're going Jai, yeah, yeah, reluctantly because you know well, it's going to be a tough fight. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you were, Will, if you were willing betting, for Jai, yeah, yeah, I yeah, hear you. Yeah. I, I, I think I think Tapori is going to sub him. I'm yeah. afraid. It's, yeah, it's a tough fight. Mm-hmm. Although I mean, Jai's been working with uh, uh, Arnold, Arnold Allen, Allen at Renegade. A, you know, yeah, yeah. So he's got good neck attacks. Yeah, they've got I just good, think Tapori is a different there, level they? though. Coming yeah, prepared. They are. They are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of good, good bodies. Yeah, we ran into a couple of the boys recently. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, okay, let's move on, let's move on. Mm -hmm. So next up we have um, Nathaniel Wood Mm -hmm. against Vince Morales. Mm. So Nathaniel Wood is 17 and 5, Vince Morales 11 and 5. This is another one that could... I mean, this is it's a bit of a, bit of a coin toss, this one for me, because Nathaniel does get drawn into brawls sometimes. Like, he does he does like to bang a little bit, and Morales is he's, he's, a, he's a little bit leery on his yeah, feet, isn't he? But in and out, big power. I don't power. Even say he's twitchy. I see him always say twitchy. Oh, he's, twitchy. he's twitchy, you know. He's been doing your classes, uh, right? That's what it is. Yeah. He's twitchy, and he's in good form as well, right? I, just, mm. I remember looking at this. Two-fight win streak. Two-fight win streak. Hmm... To fight, and you've got it was this as well, wasn't it? It was talking about this an inch in height and reach advantage for Vince Morales, although a massive striking output difference for uh, Nathaniel Wood six point mm. two strikes per minute compared to four point mm. six. That's a lot. That is that's like Max Holloway numbers. Seventy five percent takedown defense for Nathaniel as well. Mm. Like you might try and wrestle him. He might he might decide he wants to take Morales mm. down because Morales is going to be quite happy to stand and trade. He's, you know, he's confident in his hands. He's confident in the pocket. You know, yeah. That that over Andy caught Smolka with was a, a, a demo of his power. And yes, I tell you what yes, else he yeah, uses. Yeah. You know that um, who was it that used it? The uh, Davy Grant, the little switch stance hook. Right. Okay. He uses that quite often. Not to go off the line. Yeah. Mm. I think this is going to be a good striking match, but yeah. I won't be surprised if Nathaniel Wood decides to grapple it with him a little bit. I watched a couple of minutes of his last one. Um, Morales, yeah, it's in and out. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he does that real well. But if walking time is low kick as well, start well, chopping him a little bit. He has been stopped by low kicks, mm. Morales. So uh, Gutierrez you know I mean? stopped him with low kicks in so the second. So you think Wood might try and wrestle him, chop his legs a bit, keep it MMA. Yeah, I think Morales is probably down gonna want to box. Yeah, yeah, up and, up and down think... him a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It'd work out for him, couldn't it? I think so. I think the low kicks it, it, there on that bounce, on that bounce, I think that low kicks there for him, chop his legs, slow him down, take that away. And start up and down with the hands, mm-hmm. boxing, wrestling, yeah. mix it up, exhaust him from it, thinking. Yeah, can make it work. Yeah, my concern with my concern with um, with Nathaniel is that he's a bit too keen to mix it up. He's mm-hmm. a bit too keen to get drawn in. And you've got to think this is UFC London. The crowd are going to be going fucking mental. Yeah, he's going to have Brad in his corner, all like psyched up and Kill excited. Him. <laughs> Mate, did you you, know, did you follow Brad on Instagram? Do you see uh, all his Lego follow. come off the shelf the other day? No, no, no. <sighs> he's got a Lego collection comparable to mine, Brad has. Right, well, that impressive. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Impressive. Right, okay, yeah, okay. he's got a wicked Lego collection. Anyway, he had all of his Lego, all of his Star Wars stuff on a shelf above right. the sofa, and the cleaner came in and was cleaning, and the whole shelf come down. And he just took a photo of it, and it's just fucking what smashed. Just it? smashed. Yeah, wow. he's gonna have to rebuild all, almost all the sets. I, 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 I how would you I feel if that was down, you? Mate, how, how would you react to that? I had to sit down when I saw the picture. <laughs> I did. I was like, I was like oh. I mean, and I've been watching. I've been watching tanks get blown up and shit on Instagram yeah, all week. Yeah, mate, choppers going down. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, but, and I, and but I, Brad's I, Lego. Brad's Done Lego. <laughs> Brad's Lego push you over the end. <laughs> over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I was I almost volunteered humanitarian aid for him. Honestly, yeah, I mean, it was bad. It was bad. Don't get no worse. <laughs> Debo, poor bugger. Yeah, a lot of hours there. A lot of hours. A lot of hours. Yeah, it's all right. He's got time now. He's retired. Yeah. Mate, GB top team is wicked. I, I had a look. I nice, look. Yeah, it? looks good, man. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice. nice. Yeah, really nice. I had a good look around the other day. They've got mm. loads of space. Nice mm. big cage. Nice ring and like two mm. matted areas either side. Mm. That's what you as want, as well as an S and C yeah. area. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Really good. They've got a great setup. Mm. Anybody down there, go and check them out for mm. sure. Mm. Um, so, what you reckon on this one? Then? I reckon that's giving me itchy skin. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. I've never read that before. Feel on my face, right? I've yeah. gone, gone red yet. I've gone rouge yet. No, no? you're always uh, red. Yeah, no, but redder. <laughs> These lights are making me look orange as fuck as well. Um, <laughs> even more ginger. Um, again, I'm gonna back the Brits. I'm gonna back yeah, the yeah, Brits because yeah. I do believe in you know, fucking. I've had it in my career where I've traveled and it has affected performance, it's affected weight cuts, and you know, that home crowd. Yeah, you know it does make a difference, and it does give an advantage. I believe. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. do. I it's do sort of about driving to the venue, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. I feel like when it's neck and neck, I think that pushes it in the Brits' favour. When I'm unsure, I'm gonna, and I'm always going to back the Brits. Yeah. I reckon. But realistically, as well, I think, I think, yeah, I think you can do it. I think yeah, you can do it, man. Yeah, it's going to be a hard fought fight. It's going to yeah. be a hard fought battle if he wins. I, I'm, I'm picking yeah. Nathaniel by decision, but I yeah. think he's going to have to really work hard for yeah. it. Yeah, keep discipline. Yeah, not get drawn in. That's keep it. that. Keep that. 
Stay on cool, the outside, keep chopping his leg. Yeah, chop his Offer leg. him a boxing match and then pull level out and change, chop his leg. Yeah, or level change underneath him or, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mix it yeah. up on him that, in that way. Make him timid to commit to anything. Yeah. And then he would chop the leg again. There you go. And that's his way to success in yeah. it, I reckon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll move on, shall yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, uh, Elise Reed against Cora McKenna. Mm. You don't know much about Elise Reed, do no, you? No, I don't know. So no. she's had she's had one fight in the UFC. Let me mm-hmm. just pull up a record. She she's had one fight in the UFC, and she came in against Sh- Sajara Eubanks. Right. And and Eubanks is a big, strong fighter. She's been up weight classes. She's that that fight was at flyweight. Um, she's fought down as low as atom weight though. Elise Reed, right. like she's 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 been really low in her career. I think she was, yeah, like atom weight, that? straw weight, straw weight, yeah. So she's had one atom weight fight as a pro, and then three straw weight fights, and then she came in against Sajara, who's already a big, strong fighter, and fought at flyweight. Well, so now she's ass. fighting. It's a big ask that that's is. Big, she that just is. looked way out of her depth. But yeah. she, but from what I've seen of her outside the UFC, she she looks pretty good. Yeah, she's a gamer. She's got a decent grappling, decent scrambling exchanges. Mm. I don't think she's comparable with Corey on the ground. I yeah. think Corey has the advantage there for sure. Yeah, strength wise as well as discipline. And I also think she's probably a more disciplined striker. Mm. But Elise is a little bit wild. She's a li- a little bit reckless. Mm. Like I, I watched Corey's last fight again yesterday, and she's like against Kay Hansen. She's got a real nice, tight, well-disciplined boxing style. Mm. And I think as long as she sticks to that, she, she's going to be able to walk Elise Reed down. And if yeah. she does decide she wants to grapple, I do think she's going to be able to take her down and, yeah. and, and dominate her. Mm. It's just that unpredictability on the feet from Reed. She's a bit yeah. a bit wild. And that X factor a bit, yeah? Yeah. They were speaking about with uh, Johnny Walker, I don't know. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, she's but then, you know, she's back down in in a weight class, which is mm. which is suitable for her now. So I don't know whether a, str- a, a grappling would look any better, given the fact that she's now fighting someone more of a more size. More of a size, even yeah. in match power and strength-wise. But Corey McKenna's good. Mm, she yeah, is yeah. good, and yeah. she's you know she's uh, she's out of alpha male now, isn't she? All the time. Yeah, yeah. she's getting better and better, and mm. she's comfortable, used to winning by decision as well. She's yeah, yeah. like she can comfortably cruise to a decision yeah, yeah. and Grind shut people down. Out. Yeah, yeah, do enough. Yeah, or, or you know, quite happily take their back as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got to go, Corey McKenna. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, who's up next? We have. Oh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. You'll have to bend it. A is, bit. That, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You'll have to bend the arm. You can move it closer towards you without moving it. Go on, you can do it. I'll figure it out. Push, push, this push. way. Oh, hey, there you look, go. At look at that. Here we go. Fucking hell, Jim. You could have told me that. It would have been a lot easier, wouldn't it? The fucking heart, fucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, that's too close now. Oh, no. Cool. There we go. I quite that, like it. That is that better, Jim? Yeah. Is that okay? There yeah. we go. Look at that. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up. The. <laughs> This is a great fight. Mike Grundy against Makwanamir Khan. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, Mike Grundy's a, a Commonwealth wrestler. Mm-hmm. He's a very, very strong wrestler, really well conditioned, trained out of uh, Cowbon, good striking from um, uh, um, Colin Heron, of course. And then on the other side, you've got Makwanamir Khan, who's got a good Greco background. He's got a lot of submissions on his record. He's been working a lot on his boxing as well. Mm-hmm. He goes a bit flat if he doesn't get the fight won in the in the first, first round. round. Yeah, and he's coming off three deci- three losses, one mm-hmm. being a knee loss to Laro Murphy in the second round, and two decisions. Mm-hmm. When he does win, it's anacondas usually. Yeah, but he's he's up against it here. I, I think I think Grundy can can shut him down with good wrestling. Grind him out, mm. tire him out because he gets tired. I think it's that X factor in the again that wild that first round. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. a bit bit all all over the place, big stuff in it. That's when he uh Udi knock out with the knee. That was Emma Kwan, wasn't it? Oh yeah, uh, uh, Andy Ugle. That was it, yeah. yeah. Ran, it was like got, six seconds, yeah, ran, just ran at him yeah, from the he's opening. Got that sort of stuff to his game mm-hmm. as well, isn't it? So first round he's dangerous, isn't he? Yeah, because he doesn't but, really mind where he lands. Mm. That's the reason why he does that that crazy mm. stuff. Because he, he can land wherever and he's comfortable scrambling back. Yeah, he might not feel like that against Grundy, mm. and but given the fact that he's he's had a couple of decisions where he's you know he's he has been kind of out outworked, he might want to slow it down a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, be a bit more efficient. Yeah, pick it. It's a smart way of going in against Grundy, isn't yeah. it? I mean, what 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 would be ideal for Macwin is if he can if he can be patient and he can you know maybe chip at the leg and you know just kind of 
not really engage too much and make Grundy a chase little a bit. Chase a little bit. Yeah, chase yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he's been working a lot. Work, use his jab, use his face, use, because he's taller as well. Right. Yeah, taller, a bit of range, yeah. a bit more range. Yeah. Thinking body wise off the top of my head. Yeah, I think he Use that be. length, be disciplined. Where make Grundy work for everything, maybe make Grundy tired. You know what I mean? So they've got the same reach. They've both got a 72 inch reach, but right. Macwin's three inches taller. Okay. Yeah. Southpaw the Orthodox as well. Hmm. Yeah. Like I, I, I think to be honest, if Macquin's patient enough, Grundy will will initiate a takedown, and yeah. I think that's where Macquin can either Snag attack neck. his neck or or Especially maybe early. even maybe even a, a cat, like a flying knee or something. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised yeah, yeah. if he's got some like mm. counters to a level change on the open stance. You see it all the time, don't you? Yeah. Even if you throw in a body, that one that's like the most common. Knee. Yeah, rear knee. But you see that much times it when someone throws a an inside low kick or a, a body kick mm -hmm. and they change the level onto the knee. Yeah. It's risky. We were speaking about it every yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, Monday, yeah. remember, we were yeah. doing all them drills, weren't we? Yeah. With the line, the danger of that line. Yeah. Who is it? So, it's, um, is it Marlon Marais with the two different knockouts with the same kick? Can't think oh, of it, I can't think who it was now. I'm sure it was. It's Marlon right. Marais. He knocked out, um, is it Aljamain Sterling? And there's, there's another one. Oh, it's uh, Jimmy Rivera. There we go. So he, he threw this exactly the same kick. I'll, sh I'll show you in a bit. He threw exactly the same kick. Yeah, I think, yeah. One of them, he caught the kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he stayed at distance. With Aljo, he closed distance and he caught him with the knee. Yeah. But if you look at them, exactly the same position in the in the octagon, exactly the same technique and everything. Yeah. Just level changed onto it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I think Macquin's going to try and be calm. And I think he's going to try and draw Grundy in and try and attack him as he's level changing. Instead of trying to pressure him early. Yeah. And spunking the energy. And spunking his energy. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got to click on it. If you're getting tired, you've got to think, right, free fight loss. I need to, I need to be smart here, man. Yeah. I've got to win this, isn't it? Maximum efficiency. Need a win. Surely. Yeah. Surely. You've got, to, you've got to think so. That's where his head's got to be at. But again... Yeah. See, if I'm, gr if I'm Grundy, I'm moving in behind behind a, mm. a, you know, a tight boxing stance and mm. I'm, I'm keeping him up against the fence and I'm just yeah. going to make Watch him that, work. Watching that, that rear knee. Yeah. Snatch Stingle's head on the outside. Yeah. Cross body doubles. Get safe takedowns. So you're not take coming downs. from a distance. Get to the single hook. Get to the single. Get to the body. Work in there against the cage. Slow it down. Mm -hmm. Octagon control. Keep pinned on the cage. A minute, 90 seconds. Be active. Look for the takedown. Yeah. Then he's going to start to get tired and start to do silly things yeah. like trying to whiz a throw and stuff. Yeah, and you're yeah. not going to get Grundy with something yeah. like that. Grundy should grind him out, right? For the decision. I think so. I think so. You've got to also think Macquin's a confidence fighter and he's on a three-fight losing streak. Yeah, yeah. Like that doesn't do anything for your confidence, let me tell you. No. no <laughs> he's no. won one in his last five, in fact. Danny Henry, the anaconda. Right. And, and you know, you look at Grundy and, yeah, he's coming off a couple of losses, but it's a, you know, I mean, a unanimous decision against Mav Saev Lov, which was, he's a nightmare of a fighter for everybody, undefeated 12-0. Right. And then a split decision against Lando Venata, who was, he almost put uh, Tony Ferguson out yeah, when, yeah. when they faced. He's a, He's a dangerous individual. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a big risk for Grundy in the first round, getting caught with a flying yeah. knee or getting wrapped up in an anaconda. Leave, yeah, he, making a mistake. Yeah. yeah. But if he if he sit, if he he gets to his stall at the end of the first round, I think he dominates to a yeah. decision after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'll go yeah. Grundy. Yeah. I'll go Grundy as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm excited for this one as well. Uh, Mohamed Mokhaev against Cody Durden. Mm-hmm. So Mokhaev 5-0, making his UFC debut. He was the IMAF champ. He signed with Brave and was undefeated in Brave. He's coming off a, a rear naked choke a win over a Driscoll uh, to, um, for the belt. And he's facing Cody Durden, who's 12-3 and with one draw, who's, uh, I believe, Div NCAA Division One. Okay. Strong wrestler. Very okay. strong wrestler. But could potentially really play into Mokhaev's hands because I feel like... See, the thing is with Mokhaev, he's... He's spent his entire wrestling career in the UK, mm -hmm. so he's so he's he's his wrestling is is a high level, but he's not he's not been a, against the guys that Cody Durden's been wrestling against. Mm -hmm. Like the experience that Durden will have in kind of general wrestling is greater, but I think Mokhaev's wrestling for MMA, MMA might be more effective. Yeah, and also you know he's he's got good striking. Yeah, I was about to say he strikes kicks. well. Yeah, just yeah. strike well. Mm -hmm. Just MMA and put it together well. That's it. It's these younger kids, isn't it? It's the, I mean, I don't know how old Cody does. I mean, he's never is. lost, has he? He's hot, isn't he? This is it. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? 20 yeah. odd, am yeah. 20 odd, no amateur, something like that, wasn't something it? Something like that. Let me Five times world champion, so many times European champion. Very impressive fighter. Yeah, man. A lot man. of experience against fighters from all around the world as well. Jamie, yeah. you were you were over there when he was competing, weren't you? At IMAF. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. 
Yeah, where he's 22 and 0 as an amateur. Mm. Pretty impressive, mm. that is. Yeah. And, and you know, he, he's, he's cycling through people. He's, you know, yeah. he's going rear naked choke, decision, knockout, a couple of decisions, a couple of stoppages, rear naked choke, a couple of, de- you know, he's, he's done, he's got a very, very well rounded game. Yeah. And stopping people with these are three minute rounds as well, aren't they, as amateur? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. on his way to the top, isn't he? And it's just another stepping stone for him, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah. This, his last one against playing the Driscoll was really impressive. I did a war room for it. It was funny actually because I'd, I'd done the I'd done a war room for it and I, I said I, I think there's a I think there's a potential he's going to catch him with a Rene Kachokia, and after the fight I got a message from Mokayev and he was like I watched the breakdown and I'm like as I was watching it I'm like there's no way I'm winning this one by Rene Kachok and he subbed him by Rene. I did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. that seed. Yeah, I just <laughs> the, it was just it's just the way that he wrestles. You know what I mean? It, mm. It's it's like heavy pressure without being like clamped on all the time it's like real fluid because yeah. he's quite happy to break away and start to strike again mm. like, I think Cody Durden's a real tough test for him given the fact that he is a wrestler and he might be able to just shut him down yeah. but I, I think the UFC are banking on Mokai like you said that sums it I think it's wrestling for MMA isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. That, that is, again it's different than itself as well isn't it mm. I think it, it is on him does what he chooses for sure so we're both going Mokai yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay uh I think this is one of the toughest fights for a local fighter as well. Uh, so sure. Molly McCann fighting Luana Carolina. Uh, the reason the reason I think this is challenging is because of the style of Carolina, right? She's quite tall. She's got a good jab. She's got a decent takedown defense after after she's kind of established a bit of dominance. Like she was, she, her last fight was against uh, Lupita Godinez, and when she started to take over the fight, when she was able to start pressuring her back up against the fence. I could see that being a really a really dangerous cycle for Molly to get caught in. Yeah. Because Molly's game, she's got good head movement, but she swings her punches quite wide. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a danger that um um Carolina might just keep coming down the center. Yeah, yeah. Like do you know when when Molly fought um Cash Wader at UFC London a while back and she got her eyes yeah, swelled yeah, up yeah, real so, yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Like that was the problem. Like she was getting caught with shots because yeah. she was winging and she's weaving. Yeah. yeah. My concern is that is that Carolina might be able to just kind of walk her down behind behind straight mm. punches, you mm. know. And then we might see Molly dip in the head a bit as well, yeah. get caught with some of the centre, maybe potentially mm. kicks and stuff. She don't want to be know? on the back foot, does she? Not really, no. not really. And and I think if she is on the back foot for long, I think she'll level change. I think she'll try and grapple with her. Mm. Yeah. So uh, so there's a two inch height advantage for Carolina, but a seven inch reach advantage. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Straight up, with straight arm, with straight arm shots and bent arm shots. Yeah, eighty-eight percent takedown defense as well. Like it's, it's it's it could be a rough night for Molly. Like she might be able to just walk in and mm. start clubbing her and put her on the mm. back foot straight away and never allow her to even start. But what I've seen from Carolina is that she's able to kind of recover after a rough patch yeah. and work her way back into the fight. And she just goes back to nice tight mm. discipline, just bat 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 yeah. bat. You know what I mean? And mm. that might be real problems for Molly. Just stylistically, it might be a, a tough a tough matchup. You got to think if she can chop her legs a bit, get in on the wrestle, not put her house on get scoring the takedown. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Separate strike, crowd it, make it uglier. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If anyone's going to uh, perform with the crowd behind them and give it their all, it's Molly, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's, this is you the thing. I mean, I mean she, you know, drive she does rise to the occasion. Mm. But she does. She can also be outworked. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's my concern. I mean, in, in her last fight, this, the numbers that she put out, she threw... Uh, she landed 127 punches and scored two takedowns in her last fight. Molly did. That's that's a mad output compared to the rest of her fights, where she's. I mean, she's she's sometimes getting over 100 strikes, but often not. Mm. You know, it's that's a big output. Like she might be able to just overwhelm her, but I just, my concern is that she's going to struggle to get close to her, and then she's yeah. going to start to reach for takedowns and not get them. Yeah. Yeah. Again, comes back to being efficient, being smart, isn't it? So what Not- what would you say if you're in Molly's corner? Say say if she's if she spends the first round getting her face jabbed and, and can't get in close for a takedown, she comes back to the corner at the end of the first round, what's your advice to her? What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'd I'd say I'd say to I'd say to to start fainting level changes yeah, yeah. Le- level changes to set up strikes and start you gotta get a thing if you can't if you can't land hands yeah, you got to think about chopping the legs, yeah? Mm-hmm. Take her movement away. And you're all the way in or you're all the way out, but it's like, go to get thinking about the wrestling. The only yeah. way, if your hands aren't landing, 
because someone's jabbing your head off in it. You, you've got to get them thinking about the wrestling. Yeah. And that doesn't mean scoring the takedown. It means planting that seed at yeah. the wrestling. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. some flybys, a couple of big shots, get us a double guard and get in on the body. Mm -hmm. And just don't, and like you say, just don't, don't, again, don't spunk it. Don't go 110 on the takedown. You're not getting it. She rides it well, then be efficient. Pit her on the cage, slow it down, head position, knees, elbows, mm. and go that route in it and grind her out. Yeah. You know, that's, and that's that's the other, that's the way to approach it. Make it a, maybe a little bit ugly, a little bit boring. You know what I mean? Not mm. score the takedown, and just go to yeah, yeah. If that's the case, and that's that's usually the best point yeah. of call, right? Mm. I mean, even if even if she does have a, a rough first round and she gets back to her corner, um, and they do a they do give her that kind of advice, and she is able to like tie her up in head position. I mean, with her being shorter, head position's easier. Mm. She'll be able to prop her up against the fence with that and yeah, spike her in, knee slow and, it down, yeah, yeah, run the clock a bit. Yeah, like I think she might be like might physically be able to control her. I just think she's going to struggle to take her down. Yeah, you know. But again, like, like you said, isn't it? done right. You don't, yeah, yeah, don't blow yeah. energy. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not every take down. What was it the other day? Colby's fight with Masvidal. Well, I know he's talking down as well, but I think it was the third round or fourth round. Whoever's yeah. commentating says he scored four of fifteen so far. Mm -hmm. Four of fifteen attempts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and so you don't need to necessarily score a takedown, do you? It's better stats you know than I mean? a lion. I think it's one in sixteen when when a lion's attacking prey. Yeah. That's so how there you often go. They get it. You got to you got to yeah, try so, fifteen yeah. times before you're going to get exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. But again. The way the MMA is going, the guys are doing, guys and girls are doing things well. It's getting, think about the takedown, using them openings to strike. Because if you're thinking, well, we've had it anyway, with someone who we think they're going to wrestle, we, we freeze, we hesitate. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? We, we lose that confidence of throwing the shots, mm -hmm. innit? Yeah. Yeah, and exploiting that. Do you know what I mean? Plant them seeds and just stick to the plan, up and yeah. down. And when we can, slow it down and stall it out and play the game. I mean, we had a bit of that the other week. Yeah, yeah. Slow it down, stall yeah. it out, play yeah. the game, do it well, yeah. do it efficiently, do it smart. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, my, it's the game, isn't it? It's, it's, it's just a, it's yeah. just a, it's just a, a violent game. That's all fine, isn't it? Play the game and uh, edge it. She can win this. Yeah. She can win this. She, I, I think I do think it's one of the tougher fights on the yeah. card. For, I, I really do. Mm. Just I just think stylistically, like there are a lot of other fighters in this division, and I would think to myself, Molly would have a, a good chance of really, really giving them a hard time. Like even if they'd have given her um, the the fighter that uh, Carolina um, has just beaten. Um, Godinez like that would have been a good one because she's kind of short in stature and she's going to want to wrestle a little bit more mm. see I think maybe they've picked they've picked Carolina for her because she's going to want to strike but I think the style of her striking is a problem for Molly yeah I mean you know I, I, I might be I might be wrong you know Molly's been looking quite sharp on pads I've seen her hitting some pads mm. and stuff but it changes when there's the atmosphere and she, like yeah. you, know, you know what Molly's like she's walking out she's going come on Fucking come on! Yeah, and yeah. she like gets herself all hyped up. So it's always going to be a brawl, mm. you know. That's because that's the way that she's hyping herself up. Didn't work for me when I was fighting. Didn't really work for you either. No, did no, it? no, no. You the, the 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 ragey approach. Yeah, it's, it's not usually the best, is it? No, it didn't. It's just cool, calm, collected. It seems yeah. to be calculated about it. Yeah, it seems to work better, doesn't it? Yeah. What are you saying? I'm going back to the Brits, man. I'm going back to the Brits. I love your confidence, Jimmy. I, I'm going back to the Brits, but I am. Yeah, this and a couple of others we've yeah. said. Yeah, could easily be a bad yeah. night. This is a this is a tough one. I'm I'm yeah. making honest picks. I have nothing yeah, against yeah. anybody on the card. No, no. I, I think yeah. I think Luana might win a decision here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might be a it might be a rough one for Molly. I just yeah. think she might be on the end of a, a jab cross all night yeah, and struggle yeah. to close distance. I think yeah. she, I think I, I could just see her keep reaching for that lead leg and just but but yeah. push away. But yeah, you know, yeah. slightly better footwork as well. I would say Carolina's got mm. Mm. rough fight, but yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm thinking mm. Carolina's going to take it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another tough one as well. Who's it next? It's like a Jack Shaw against Timur Valiev. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm more confident in Jack Shaw in this one, but yeah. the, like Jack Shaw's general path to victory is to is to walk them down with boxing and low kicks, yeah, push them up against the fence, mm -hmm. tick their back, choke mm -hmm. them out. Mystery's got a wicked clip coming that he got the the other day. He went down. Uh, to yeah, see he Jack. said yes. Yeah, so it was it's awesome. wicked. And he talks mm. through the, his process to finish. It's beautiful. Um, and the thing is with him, it's so consistent. I've seen him do it all the time on Cage Warriors. He mm. stepped into the UFC, is doing the same Was thing. He Fifteen and zero now. Fifteen right? and zero, yeah, mm. against eighteen and two for Valiev. Now, Valiev is shorter. He's 
going to be quite happy to fight on the back foot. He's going to be quite happy to kind of move away and try and point and kick and he's move. The, he's the laser legs, isn't he? He's yeah. got some good ass legs, Super isn't he? Super quick legs. Good take down very, defense, very, good wrestling. Very, very legs. Like, very legs. Like very, very legs. Very, very legs. Very, very legs. Mm. So what are you, you saying? Mean. What are you saying? Jack Shaw can walk him down and beat him up boxing? Yeah. I think Jack can push him back, right? Yeah. Take him down on a low kick, maybe. Back him up, make him kick on the back foot. Mm -hmm. Put his back against the cage and do Jack. Yeah. Maybe. Taller, jab think, his head off. Time I, to take yeah. down well on the legs. Jack, do Jack. Yeah. I, I, ju I just wonder whether Valiev can stall that process on the fence. I think yeah, that's maybe, where he yeah, can probably stall it. Down it. A bit. So, so, so it might be better for Jack to just stick to the striking range because he yeah, is yeah. he is taught I mean because the other thing as well like Valier's last fight against Bar uh, Barcelos I watched it live and I watched it again yesterday I still don't think Valier won that fight it was a majority decision for him but it was so close right. and he was on the back foot the whole time and he just I, I, I don't know I just kind of felt to myself Barcelos is good but he, he, he kind of has like a like a steady pace, which mm. Jack Shaw doesn't. He, Jack Shaw changes the pace yeah, quite yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah. It it just it wouldn't surprise me if Jack Shaw was able to kind of stay in and out of range and just light him up and get in and out of range enough not to get caught with anything. But if he closes him down and tries to take him down against the fence, he might find himself burning loads of energy. Yeah, yeah. Do you know got, what I mean? You've always got to be careful. And that's that, my concern it? there because yeah. I think Valia might be able to stall him there. I think I feel he's quite. <sighs> What's the word? Quite meticulous, isn't he, Jack? Very yeah, disciplined. Very. very. I think he's efficient. I don't think he'd spunk his load. No. No, I think he'd no, no too much. Back to the body, back to head position. Risk control, a, there knee, There was just head one fight he got a bit drawn in, wasn't it? Was it uh, Hunter Azure? He, he won a split decision. But he, he just, he got drawn in a bit. He was a he, bit scrappy yeah, in it. Yeah, I think I know what you're on about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I even think that was the impre that was the the kind of mood in the corner was like, like you're getting drawn into a scrap here unnecessarily. Split. Yeah, like if you look at his like the the fights before them, I mean he's running through through guys with rear naked chokes, but he's not doing mm. it first round. He's breaking them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he started off, you know, first round rear naked chokes, second round TKO, first round rear naked chokes, armbar, and then he started to like as the level got up, like Vaughn Lee three round decision. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. as the level got up, as the fighters got more difficult, they got you know uh, Scott Malone. Uh, mm -hmm. Hernandez in his debut, slightly better fighters, slightly longer to beat them, but still doing the same thing. Mm. But then with Azure, he, he 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 just got a bit he got a bit drawn into a into a fight for, for my liking. Yeah, I think if he stays disciplined, I just I won't want him to waste his energy trying to take his back when Valiev's going to be really strong in that position. I might, I'm you know, I, I'm definitely picking Jack Shaw because I'm, yeah. I'm well and truly on the uh, the Jack Shaw train, the train, yeah, like train, definitely, me the too. The tank, mm. yeah, yeah. What do you reckon? You yeah. reckon he can sub him? He's Again, never been, though. he's never been oh, stopped. Valiev, got a hot dog rope. <laughs> <Belly, laughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, you got, I think decision. You reckon? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. What's right? He's never yeah. been stopped, Valiev. Yeah, but he's not. Then he's not stopping many people. Like mm. he's had, he's had eighteen wins. He's knocked out five and sub two. Yeah. So he's not like a devastating knockout puncher. Mm. I think Jack Shaw by by a, yeah decision. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay, who's up next? Who's up next? Uh, Krilov, Nikita Krilov against Paul Craig. Mm. Yeah. Tough. I think this is a really tough fight. Like Paul is Paul's great off his back, as we mm. know. He's got great armbar attacks, triangles, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But Krilov is smart. He's 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 a wily he's a wily veteran. He's been in the UFC, he was a heavyweight, he uh got released, he went away and won some fights, he came back, he made his made his second debut in the UFC against Jan Bajovic, got dominated on the ground. Mm. But he's a good fighter. Mm. He's a he's a good fighter. He's a real nightmare in every range. Yeah. Just a good mixed martial artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my concern in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Paul Craig's got good kicks. Yeah, yeah. But he's just not just doesn't seem to have the confidence to use them. Can weather a storm. Yeah. You no, know, that fatigues guys, isn't it? Guys punch yourself out a bit, try and get the kill. Resilient, yeah. crafty. Well, I mean, look what he did to Ankalaev. Yeah, he can pull out the fifty nine of the third round, subbed yeah. him with the, with the triangle. Yeah, and he's he's top top, isn't he? Yeah, top top boy. But here's a question for you then, because mm -hmm. I, I, in a interview 
that I saw recently, he was talking about retiring at the end of this year. Who? Paul Craig. All right. Yeah. He he mentioned talked about retiring. He don't want to do it for for a long time. Like, uh, okay. does that change the? Do, have you heard that, Jamie? Did you hear him say that? Yeah. Right. Like, what does that change the thought do you reckon process? That changes in the prep? His, yeah. Mm. Mm. When was that? Since the last fight. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever been in that mindset where you're like, "This is my last one for sure"? Because I, like I remember fighting well, I'm just, Chris Lytle. I'm, I'm just mentally broken, isn't I? So <laughs> fucking I'm t- king in the world one day and fucking dying the next. I don't <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah, as it was that's slightly concerning, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's just mm. an odd place and it's an odd thing to say as well. Especially I actually when meant to mention uh, it. When especially it. stepping into cage with him, for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? I actually because I did a pre, uh, 2022 preview show for the start of the year and um one of my picks because if you remember Paul Craig got matched with Gustafsson and that was like a massive opportunity and Gustafsson pulled out the fight and he didn't Paul Craig didn't get it. I was thinking they were going to give him another big opportunity. And right. I thought they were going to give him um, Anthony Smith. Right. Which I think would have been a bit... Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. like there's, a, there's a danger that Krilov can shut him down, but Anthony Smith does step, tend to wear in the later rounds, don't he? Yeah, yeah. Belly rumbling, man. If you hear my belly, <laughs> Oh, they can. These mics are... These oh, mics yeah. oh, you can hear my belly yeah, rumbling. Sure. Can you hear my, hear my belly? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't farting. My belly rumbling. I ain't, <laughs> I'm going to get down to me hot dog in a bit. <laughs> so what yeah. do you reckon? What are you saying? I'm just looking at the ranks as well. Form. I, do, I just, I, I, my concern is that Paul Craig might be on the back foot for the majority of the fight, and it's going to be one of those circumstances where he's he's got to pull it out of the bag at the last minute. And Krilov is smart. I mean, he's got losses on his record, but mm. but again, you know, where's his mind at? I mean, he's you know, he's he's losing. Oh, he got arm triangle by uh, Bohovic. He got guillotined by Serkinov. So he has been subbed. He got Craig von Flug him, Craig, by... Craig put him down. Craig yeah. sub him. Put him on his back. Yeah. If I anyone's mean, going to do it, it's, it's Craig, isn't it? Like, yeah. He's I, crafting. I mean, it is. Listen, it's a tough fight. I think he'll probably triangle him, but I think he's probably going to end up being taken down in the process or he hold might... Drop, hold your hops. Or might, yeah, might, get, might get hurt, might get yeah. dropped. Yeah. And then, but and yeah, then that's, up, that's his trademark and that's his thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take armbar. I'm going to say Paul, Paul Craig, Craig by armbar. armbar. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I think Paul Craig by armbar. Yeah, I just I just think he's going to struggle in the striking range because Krilov can be quite confident moving forward and, mm. and just, you know, stick to basics. Yeah. Um, And, you know, and then if Paul can't take him down, then this, then his confidence starts to shake a bit more, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Off his back, he's super slick. Mm. And he did my seminar the other week. Yeah, I'm going to be saying, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, he's got honestly, man. You know, when you see him hit pads or you know move around with somebody else, and he just lets he just lets his strikes go. Mm. I remember him hitting pads when he was in Australia. He was he was on a card over there, and he was cracking the pads. Not with hands, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like hands and feet, like yeah, yeah. legs in particular. He's yeah, a big yeah. dude. Yeah, like if he if he would just have the confidence to let his shots go, I think I think a lot of these guys would fall in front of him. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay, next one, mm. heavyweights. Still not sh- exactly sure whether this one's going to arrive on the card because they're both oh, yeah. fighting out of Russia. Yeah. Um, Shamil Abdurahimov, 20 and 6 against Sergei Pavlovich, 14 and 1. Yeah. It's that time where I do this. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes. Twitchy, twitchy. <laughs> I'm just going with the younger fighter. Yeah. Really. Like, yeah on, like, the, on the way up, on the way down. Exactly. Little bit, yeah. Little bit, but I, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, Pavlovich has got good striking. He's hittable, and Abdurahimov has got decent strikes. He's yeah, he's loose. He's quick, loose. He's fast. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. fast. Yeah, but it's Very all fast. looping shots. And, yeah, you know, and, mm. and I, I can see Pavlovich kind of walking him down. A bit knees off. Yeah, mm. and then maybe I mean I could see him stopping him with knees to the body. Mm. I could see him stopping him with knees to the body. Mm-hmm. He's just he's just a big, powerful, strong individual, and I feel like Abdurahimov's. Bit him, he's been in the UFC a long while. A little bit of that, innit? Yeah, yeah. Although we've had a few of those fights recently where you've got one guy coming yeah. up and with the other one coming. Like, yeah. like, you know, you could have said the same about RDA the, the other day and, mm. um, with, well, Fizzy, if it didn't happen, did it? I, I don't know. I mean, how long's Abdurahimov been in the UFC? He's been in for a while. M1 Challenge back in 2014, made his debut in 2015. And like, but like, if you look at the guys that he's lost to, he's lost to guys that are quicker than him that have managed to catch him yeah. and put him on the ground he loses on the ground in bottom position and Pavlovich can beat people on the feet he's got a good I mean as, you know as, as we saw in uh, in the Maurice Green fight or he can put people on the floor and just smash them to bits there there's a lot of fights in his you know when he was fighting on fight night global 
where he was he was you know ground and pounding up against the fence when people were just mm. folding. I can see him winning with knees. I can see him just being overbearing, backing Abdurahim off with with a you know a tight boxing guard, maybe threatening a couple of takedowns, but maybe not getting them. But then maybe coming back up to the back up to the clinch, yeah, working knees to the body. Yeah, look at that form and and how he's finishing people, and he thinks so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you saying, Pavlovich? Yeah, Pavlovich. I'm, I'm going. I'm going Pavlovich. Stoppage as well. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Well, it could be one. Sorry, it could be one of them. Could it be one of them? Could it be one of them? Where he tries boring and, and they just decision a job. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it could. You know it mean? could be. But I, I just I Crowd don't know. Crowd booing him. I don't know. I think I think Abdurahimov's got a round and a bit in him. Yeah. I think that's. I think. I think he may well get stopped in the first round. Yeah, I think Pavlovich yeah. might just no, think, looks you know, he's, looks he's, he's an old man. I want to put my foot on the gas. Yeah, forty Abdurimov. Yeah, still young, isn't he? Still young. Yeah, he's just coming into his prime. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like me, yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm taking Pavlovich. I think he's gonna yeah. stop him first round. Probably cool, ground cool. and pound. Mm. Probably stop him against the fence, or maybe maybe drop him with knees. Drop him on the, floor. On yeah. the ground and pound. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Here we go. So we're near the top of the card now. This so this this is a, a replacement. So it was originally Gunnar mm. Nelson against um, Claudio. Claudio mm. and Claudio's withdrawn. They've replaced Claudio with Takashi Sato. Mm. So Gunnar's been out for a, for a minute. Wow, he? quite a while. Yeah, right? yeah. He's um, he's a bit of an enigma. Gunnar Nelson is. Mm. When was his last one? Two thousand nineteen. Lost the decision Three to Gilbert years. Burns. Now. Yeah. Although that that Leon Can Edwards decision mm. was a split decision, he yeah. got hurt bad in that fight. Elbow, Do you remember that elbow yeah, in the pocket, it was, weren't it? It was lovely, lovely really from nice. Leon, weren't it? I think that this is going to be a much more winnable fight for Gunnar Nelson. I think Agree. he's going to be able to. Um, I think he's going to be able to stay on the outside and pick him off. I think he's going to be quicker and more uh, and more. He's elusive, isn't he? Yeah, more he's elusive. Elusive. He does that cra- that long karate point yeah. style very very well, doesn't he? We see. They, see Sato's got a very similar style, though. You know, like if you if you watch him, he's he's got a very kind of karate style as well. Mm. I just think Gunner's Gunner's a better all rounder. I think once he puts him on the floor, he's going to be able to dominate him. I mean, if you look at if you look at Sato's record, last three losses, they're all been subs. subs yeah, man. that arm triangle against Bieza as well. I mean, I could see Gunnar Nelson doing something like he's that, soon, but much so, quicker. So slick on the ground, isn't he? Very, Gunner? very good. So good. I always remember that fight against Zach Cummins when he fought in uh, in Cummins. Dublin. Remember Zach when yeah. he was back when he was a welterweight. He went up to light heavyweight after that, I think. Right. But Gunnar was on his back. He had a like a like a, a, a wrist control from behind, and he was like he was like whipping him in the ribs with his knuckles because he was guarding his neck. So he was like slapping him with his knuckles to get him to yeah, bring yeah. his arm down. He yeah. went whack whack, and then he pulled his arm down. And he just mm. s- straight under, mm. super slick. Mm. Yeah. I'm taking Gunnar Nelson. I think he's going to sub him. Yeah, I think he's Four better sub him. guys as well, yeah. more experienced. Yeah, they yeah. play to Sato coming in and taking it. They, uh, yeah, they, when did that happen then? I seen when was, you when you showed me the fight cards yesterday. I didn't even know that had happened. Yeah, no, it must have been. Claudio was off. Must have been a, a week ago. Right, I didn't see must that. Must have been a week ago. Any reason why? Was it ankle injury? I think I read. Or was it? Yeah, it just says injury. I think it might have been an ankle injury or something because he was right. training when I went to GB Top Team. He was sparring. Oh, was he there? Was yeah, he? Yeah, he was oh, sparring. Because um, I mess- he mess- we messaged you the week because I suppose that picture, well, the first day I went to shoot right. and we were sparring there. Right, right. And I tagged him in it, he messed up you were and we had a little chat, wishing yeah. him best of luck and stuff. And uh, yeah, I didn't realise he was here. So is it a bit bad, is he? Yeah, 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 right. he's down there, yeah. Okay. But okay. I, I think it's a it was a, an ankle injury, if I remember reading correctly. Right. But it'd be good. James, that's that have been a that'd been a cracker. I it would have been, yeah. It would have been, been a good been a one. Cracker. I kind of didn't want to see either of them lose, though, so I'm not mad yeah, about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I, I, I always look forward to Gunnar Nelson's fights because he just always has his own take on things, doesn't he? So there's no Brits on Brits on this, is there? There's no uh, Brits on Brits on this. No, no, no. Usually there is, right? Yeah, usually they do. Yeah, that. and yeah. they always are good in and all. Always. I, See, we that was saw the one. Paul Britain Taylor Britain. the other day, didn't we? Paul yeah, Taylor, yeah, him yeah. and Paul Kelly. Yeah, that was yeah, a banger yeah, of yeah, a, yeah, of a yeah, fight. yeah, 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 yeah. Classic, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. are some really good, mm. really good uh, all Brit fights, but no, there are none on this card. Mm. No. Okay, so we're both going Gunnar Nelson, are we? Yeah, yeah, sub. Right, well, this next one, uh, Paddy Pimlet against Rodrigo Vargas. So, of course, Paddy's got a massive following, big hype train behind him. He is a very good fighter, very slick with his, uh, you know, with his submissions. Won his first fight in the UFC by uh, TKO against Vendramini. Mm-hmm. Did get clipped yep. and rocked a minute. Mm-hmm. Now, Vargas is a southpaw boxer. 
he's relatively one dimensional in my opinion and I and I do think that Paddy is going to be able to kind I mean as long as he doesn't get drawn into a boxing match yeah I think he can do what he wants yeah he's massive isn't he Paddy for the way he is he's massive. a big old boy did you see he's that photo very... of Paul Reed's thing the other day he's, look, he looks in wicked shape yeah I did actually well. yeah, on his Insta, yeah, yeah I did see that yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah um it's just looking a bit more discipline on the feet for me. That's all. Yeah. You know, just going a bit too scrappy and thinking just that danger of getting caught again. Like I say, yeah. um, Vargas, yeah, is... Uh, I was guilty of it against Condit. Once yeah, that, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, just a get little bit. Drawn in and, just, and he just pulled but, this hand down and got caught. But this, the, the stars are aligned for Paddy here, aren't I they? I think so. Do you know what I mean? He, he, I think I'm pretty confident we're getting the job done. Mm. Just keep a little bit safe. Don't get too carried away on the stand-up. You yeah. know, risk factor. And then just do you. Yeah. Should be... Should probably, be right. Yeah, probably yeah. what a sub or a TKO finish. I imagine. I think he should sub him. I mm. do. Th- I do think he should sub him. My my concern with my concern with with this fight is that he does. It's that hand dropping, and it's southpaw v mm. orthodox. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So like, if Paddy gets drawn into a bit of a scrap and he, he thinks they're over. just boxing, Vargas has got a good head kick. Mm, I won't come in the head kick as well. He might just get caught. Yeah, it was mm. it was uh, uh, Mike Della uh, Torre before he joined the UFC. He caught him with a head kick. I remember watching that when he for when he's made his debut. Like the thing is with Vargas, he's a he's a confident boxer, which means five, that he's going to quite happy to stand in the pocket. Five eight, thirty six, old man, like us. <laughs> thirty six is not old, Jimmy. What are you? Thirty eight. Thirty eight tomorrow. Thirty eight tomorrow. Thirty eight tomorrow. Fucking hell! Happy yeah. birthday, Jimmy! Tomorrow. Thank you, mate. Jesus, I didn't realize yeah. that. Fucking hell. Yeah. Thirty eight tomorrow. 38 mate, I'm tomorrow. forty this year. Oh, that's fucked, isn't it? Isn't what it? happened, man? It just went, didn't it? One minute someone's punching me in the head, next minute I'm 39, about ready to turn 40. <laughs> what did happen? Don't know what happened. Where's it going? Can't tell it to you. Paddy, if you're listening, mate, just enjoy these moments. Enjoy they it, pass. man. Because they go me, so quickly. They go quick. Right? Yeah, it's very strange. No, it's all, it's awesome to watch these uh, watch these young'uns coming up. Like it's yeah. just it's just a different sport to when we were there, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. Let's have a look at these stats. So 17 and 3 for Paddy, 12 and 4 for Vargas. Um, 5'10 for Paddy, 5'8 for Vargas. Paddy's taller than 5'10. You reckon, yeah? I'm 5'10. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, that's, not you, being, yeah. that's not being kind either. <laughs> I remember someone kind of once said I was 5'10 and a half. I'll, yeah. take, I'll take extra half inch. Yeah. More, the more, UFC always had me down it. as 6 foot. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I've never been 6 foot. No, nah, Paddy, you're not 6 foot. No, nah, 5'11 and a half, technically. Ah. 182 centimetres. Paddy ain't 5'10. You five can't ten. say that though, can you? It Paddy sounds ain't like five you're reaching. Ten. You reckon he's taller? Yeah. Yeah. Big old boy. Maybe he's just a Timberlands on I know my posture is shit. Yeah, right. but he don't yeah, stand yeah. up straight. Well, yeah, true. He's, always, he's always hunched over with his big fucking North yeah. Face jacket around his neck. He's a big boy. I think he he's. Is. I think mean, he's a massive. I tell you what, he gets big, doesn't he? Well, yeah, he gets big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, I, I'm amazed how good shape he's in compared to how big he was a few weeks yeah, ago. Just, yeah, just a great job. It looked like it? someone had inflated him when we saw him. Where after was that, it? What after, event was it? He was celebrating after his win, weren't I? I seen, I seen the pictures going around. Yeah, I can't remember where I saw him. It was like, was it Cage Warriors? I'm like, had a bit of like a. Not being horrible, we had a bit of a moon face, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, that, see, that's what happens when you put on weight real fast after yeah, a fight, doesn't yeah. it? Remember it happened to Adam? Like, Adam came back yeah. to the gym and he's fucking <laughs> shredded and lean. Looked like a looked like, uh, fucking pro wrestling action figure, but then he's got a fat face. Like, mm-hmm. how the fuck does that happen? Yeah. I just get all fat and stay fat. I think we're still there. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> <laughs> that's the age, that is, though. So you reckon? Well, so he's got a two-inch height advantage at least, and a at two-inch least. reach advantage. Yeah, it's Paddy all day, man. You reckon? I reckon he's yeah. going to sub him first round. Yeah. I reckon he's going to jump on his neck, rear naked choke first round. Yeah, be a good entrance as well. Yeah, it will. always a good walk out in it when Paddy walks. Always, out. Always. always. It's going to be bouncing down there. Can yeah, you imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be wicked. Yeah, all day, Paddy. I think so. Okay, co-main event. Kind of don't know how to, like what what to think about this one. Yeah. Arnold Allen against Dan Hooker. Arnold Allen seventeen and one. Dan Hooker is twenty one and eleven. But this is Dan Hooker's first fight at featherweight. Yep. Right. Yep. He's also traveling all the way around the world to mm. get here from the other side. Mm-hmm. And he's cutting down a weight class. Mm. And he's fighting Arnold Allen on home turf in a co-main event, who's always in good shape. One hundred percent. I just, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, Hooker could come in and be like, okay, 
five round fights are my thing. Yeah. I've got conditioning for days. This is three rounds. I'm going to put it on you. Mm. I'm taller. I'm rangier. I've fought against higher level opponents. So what have I got to be worried about? Yeah. But then if he has a fucking horrible weight cut, yeah. like, if, like if he's traveled shit, what is it? 28 hours yeah. flying. Been here a week, isn't it? Is he here already? He's been here, he here a here? week. Yeah, he's been here a week already. I think. Still, you feel foggy. Yeah, I spent yeah. a month in Australia. That's what I got told. Uh, but is it? Yeah, yeah. Where's he training now? Then um, down in London somewhere. No. Oh, oh, spies. There's spies everywhere. S- uh, silks, I believe. Ronin. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think so. So um, Dan Hooker's six foot with a five inch reach advantage. Arnold Allen's five eight, seventy inch reach. Yeah, listen, it, it's a little bit of that again, isn't it? Arnold's Could going be. to the top. And Hooker's on his way down, but my on paper. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the that's, thing. Is he on his way down? This is what though? I'm saying. Or is the is the moving weight class the right thing is to it gonna do? Re, is it going to revitalize him? You know. I mean, the thing is, like, you might we might look at him in three fights time and, and be, be like, back in title contention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's spirit with Hooker. Isn't yeah, it? like he might be. He's just he's an unknown commodity. Because mm. and then if you look at the guys that like he, he has a win over Hat Perast, he has that split decision win over Felder, Aya Quinter, James Vick. But the guys he's lost to is Barbosa, Poirier, Chandler, and Makachev. But I think this is the, probably the hardest fight for the Brits, I do. I think so, night. yeah. I do. It's I just do. the unknownness of it. That's, yeah. that's Where why. Where is he at? Yeah. Where is that? And he ain't going to come in. He's not going to come not gonna go, He's going to be on it, isn't he? Yeah, of course. And he ain't on the way. He ain't going down gracefully. He ain't going no. out of the pecking order. No. Uh, I've had my go. That's it now. Let this young book walk through me. No, this is going to no. be fucking... He's not in that mindset. Nah, at all. this is. He's coming. To, he's, he's coming, coming to, dropping the weight. We spoke about this. Uh, is mm-hmm. that the answer? But we don't know what his his reasoning for it. Yeah. But if he does it and he does it well, he's here. He's doing it within time. You know, he carry, you know carries speed, power down with him, and I mean, range. He's, not, he's not particularly quick anyway. That was never an advantage. Good range, though, isn't it? Good yeah, range. Yeah, good range management. Yeah. It's range and consistency. Mm. Like he's got yeah. a higher output. Seventy-eight percent takedown defense as well. That's, that's good takedown yeah, defense yeah. compared to his, you know. Yeah. I mean, although when he's taken down once, he's been subbed. So, mm. I yeah. mean, a very yeah, a bit of a sticky one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You just, I just don't know. I mean, I'm gonna back. I'm gonna back Arnold Allen. Yeah. I think he can do it. Again, like you're saying, the travel, the weight cut, that that uh, doubt over that. Is yep. that the right call? How well is that going to go? How's he going to be at that weight below the travel and that home advantage to Arnold and that trajectory of going into the top and working his way towards the top in the division, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But Hook is fantastic. Love watching him fight. And it could it could be an upset, but I will go for Arnold I don't know, right? I've got to say Arnold Allen, right? Well, okay. Not so, sure what so, so, yeah. Let, so let, let me let me let me tell you. Let me show you this then. Well, let me tell you this. So, he came into the UFC. He was what nine nine and four. So he'd already picked up four losses in his record. Mm. Anyway, he's, he's always he's always been a bit of. a... I mean, I'm saying mine was what twenty five and ten. I think I was. Yeah. Like you just you know he, he's had a, he's had a few lessons on his way into the UFC. So he he joined the UFC two thousand fourteen. Fought Ian Entwistle as a featherweight. Now, as a featherweight, he alternated fights. Win over Entwistle, lost to Blanco by decision. Stopped Heoki, second round, lost to Yaya Rodriguez by decision. Guillotined Mark Adiva, lost to Jason Mike Knight by decision. So that was his featherweight career. So that was his featherweight run. Then he went mm. up to lightweight and he beat Ross, Jacasey, Jim Miller and Gilbert Burns. Stopped all of them. Mm. Then he went Barbosa, yeah. stopped by a body punch. But he... Like that fight was a reckless one. He just kept walking forward even though he was hurt. Mm. So I can almost I can discount that as him just being hard headed. And then you look at his other fights, Vic, uh, Vic Aya Quinta, and Felder, Felder. And that Felder one was a banger. Mm. Like Felder yeah, yeah. was almost done in the first round from those low kicks. Yeah. Like he is a fucking really, really good fighter. He's a beast. And he's a beast. maybe going back down to Featherweight is he's gonna be, you know, he's technically at the right stage now to make that stuff count. Because he was only losing by decision at featherweight before. Like you say, yeah. It all depends with age and that. You know, some people say we cut weight, the chin can go as well. You know, there's a few. Well, that's the next thing, isn't it? Yeah, he do has you know been, what I mean? He, I mean, he's not, he got stopped by a, by a body punch, but every single shot he's taken to the head, he's just fucking eaten them. He's never been, he's not been TKO'd. No. You know, he got stopped by Barbosa, but that was body shot. 
Yeah, like, Chandler dropped him on the hook, didn't that he? Was but, it. But yeah, he yeah. carried him against the cage. That was it. You know, that cross step left up, weren't it? Oh, it's yeah. Circled. Sorry. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. You're right. Sorry, but he didn't knock bad. him out with the hand. He, no. TKO he didn't knock him out ever. He, yeah. He goes, no, it's a TKO. Yeah. Ground yeah. pound. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, cross step left hook against the cage and then that ground pound. Yeah. I just, that's my, my concern is that he's going to go down to featherweight. He's going to look fucking really good. And he's going to be able to put his confidence as, as a big lightweight back into the featherweight division. And like this is a scenario I can see in the fight. I can see him having a tie clinch and him wailing knees on Arnold Allen and Arnold Allen smashing him in the body with hooks. Mm. And I can see one of them getting caught by the other one. I can see Arnold smashing him in the body and taking the wind out of him because he's had a bad weight cut. Or I can see... Dan Hooker being real strong and overbearing because he's taller and being yeah, able to pull him down with one of those knees. Lift them knees up to the ceiling. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It is a rough one. It's yeah. a really rough one. I'm going to take Arnold Allen because because my, my concern over Dan Hooker travelling and weight cutting. If Arnold wrestles a bit, fatigues him, slow, again, slows him down, yeah. that sort of game, innit? Mm -hmm. The up and down. That's get, it. Yeah. Yeah. Might have an effect kind of do what GSP up. did to uh, BJ Penn. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Not really. It wasn't really trying to get a takedown, was no. it? Just Time once. up against just, the fence, yeah, head position, like, yeah. risk make control. Make him split hard, make him pull you up on the wizard, let that lactate take, take effect. Yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the one I'm most excited for, you know. Yeah, I am. On the card, I think that's the best fight of the night. Mm. I really, really do. I think it's absolutely going to be fireworks. Yeah. I think that's great. I think that's great. Great fight. I'm sticking with Arnold Allen, but. Yeah. A big fan of Hooker, mm. and obviously we want the bits to win, but if, it'd be great to see Hooker win as well, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? To yeah. revitalise his career. Which I'm just a big fan of his. Yeah, just, yeah. He's just fun to watch. Entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Always game. But I think, I hope Arnold does it, and I think Arnold can do it, because it's nice to see these Brits getting to the top of the division, yeah. isn't it? He can certainly do for it. For sure. Mm. You know, it's, it, this is a big moment for Arnold Allen mm. as well. This you know, is the one. I think yeah. this, and then he's going to gain some momentum, and he'll take it. Where it's going to go after this one, isn't it? This is the one. That's it. This is if you if it's. This well, he's is... about ready for headlining after this, isn't he? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Where is he in the rankings? I had it up a second. Have a quick look. Like the thing with Arnold is he's a bit ninth. he's a bit like Leon. He doesn't say much. And is that's, he ninth? That's the Arnold Allen seventh at the moment. He's on this top or is he ninth? Seventh. Yeah, I'm on UFC rankings. Got, yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's seventh um, at the moment. And where's Hooker? Well, Hooker's ranked currently. At eight in the lightweight division, he's not ranked as a featherweight. Okay, but then like you could like I mean think he if, Arnold's cheeky on the mic, isn't he? He should get on that mic more. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's very he's understated. Get bit, he's, he's get a bit more vocal, doesn't he? He does. He he's does. Likeable he character, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got some. He's got some some good little quips and stuff, but he just doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't speak very loudly. You know what I mean? He mm. doesn't like project very much. He kind of yeah. talks. Talk, kind of talks under his voice a little bit. You know? Yeah. You know, you want to kind of, you want him to like broadcast a bit more, but mm. maybe that's one of the things, one of the qualities that's likable about him. You know, yeah, he is like fucking bench and squats in the back garden with his with his dad and his brother. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, that's that's who he yeah. is. We've got a documentary on the channel about him actually. It's, right, it's a good little documentary just about him training and his background. His dad's a fucking tank. Yeah, I remember he saying about his dad that, that quote after a fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. funny about, about yeah. passing drug tests. We he does take all the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I, you know, like I said, I, I'm. I think Arnold's gonna do it because I'm. I think Dan Hooker's gonna struggle with the travel and the weight cut. That's yeah. that's. But yeah. But if he if he show, if he shows up and he looks shit up fight week, they do an open workout and he's cracking pads. Yeah. I might be. I might be sitting back on the fence. I'd like to see Arnold do it because I think it's time for him to have his time his to moment. shine. Yeah. Time to shine. He'd be, be eighteen and one then. You know, it's big. He'd be eighteen and one. He'd, they'd probably move him up in the division, even just based Top on the fact that he's won. I mean, the next his next fight's going to be someone like a Korean Zombie or a Brian Ortega. You know, could be winnable fights for him. Yeah, two away from a title, isn't he? Yeah, two away from a title. Listen, one more title. Yeah, realistically, it's exciting. A lot of pressure on a human's shoulders. Definitely. Flying under the radar though, any a bit. A little bit might have helped him. A little bit, yeah, mm. yeah. Big night for him. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah massive. All right. Okay. Yeah. Main event time. Alexander Volkov against Tom Aspinall. Mm. And I will say that we are recording this on Sunday, at the beginning of fight week. So as of right now, this fight is still together. Um, I do know from my sources that Martin Tabor is on standby. Just in case they need yeah. a new a new yeah. uh, a main event. Yeah. Okay. From a NATO country, clearly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, what the fucking hell is going What's on going in the world? On the it's madness, isn't it? Madness. 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 
We've we've had a boy from the gym head over there, haven't we? We won't mention his name. I, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah we won't yeah, mention yeah, his yeah, name, yeah. but yeah, yeah, we've had yeah, <laughs> we've had someone join the Ukrainian mm. Foreign Legion. Mm. He's an animal anyway. He'll be fine. Be He'll be biting people's game, noses off. Game bazooka. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Volkov against Tom Aspinall. Mm. Tough, tough fight for Tom Aspinall. So thirty-four and nine for Volkov. 11 and 2 for Aspinall, which is a massive, Five massive round difference. Five-round main event. Five-round main event. We had a look Tough. through this, didn't we? So this yeah. is the first time that Aspinall's fought five rounds. And the fifth or something. Yeah. Right. Three wins in five rounds, was it? Or well, three, oh, no, for Volkov. He's done it. He's lost his US, last yeah, couple yeah. in over five Fives, rounds. Yeah. So so we've got... But he's done it a few times in the USC, right? Is he it? has. Yeah, yeah. So Gam was five rounds, but he lost that decision. Blades Who? was five rounds. Ganny. Gan. Ganny. <laughs> Gane. Gane. Cyril. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he lost to Gane over five rounds. He lost to Blades over five rounds. Mm. Um, but he did stop Vadum in London in mm. the fourth. I think we've got some of that blood we've on. Got some of that canvas. Some of that, some yeah, we've got some of that canvas. Blood the in the gym. Yeah. People, are, every time I do my breakdown show, someone in the comments is like, mate, there's someone who spilled shit on your wall. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no shit. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. Like, or, or like, or they'll say, oh, I was kept wiping my phone because I thought my screen was dirty. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. You can't tell it's a canvas. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so he has had a few five rounders. Mm. He has, he has defended belts. He, he, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with the fighter, Rich Hale, um, but he won uh, the Bellator heavyweight tournament final over five rounds. That was back in 2012. He's just been doing it a long time. Long time. He's probably got some common opponents with you, actually. What, being heavyweight? Yeah, you were heavyweight. Heavyweight back in the day, old. Weren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You didn't was, know yeah. this, do you? Jimmy, won, Jimmy Warled won his first fight by heavyweight. It was your first pro MMA, right? Yep. Heavyweight. What was yep. his name? Steve? Steve? Matthews. That was it. Yeah. How about that? Full of skill. When was calm, that? cool, calm, collective. Very skillful fighter back then, I was. Mate, fucking face barred him standing. <laughs> Standing face bar, I love it. Yeah. Honestly, it's one. Of, it's one of our favourite finishes because I'd fought it's on the horrific. same card. It's horrific, Dan. Don't it? What? No, it's, it's brilliant. I, I ain't got it. I can't pull it up. Good, Steve Matthews. <laughs> Cage Warriors Quest One. Terrible. That's when it was. Yeah, yeah. Cage Warriors Quest One, April eighth, two thousand five, Sheffield, England. Seventeen years ago, mate. Yeah, and we were the only years. two. Uh, we were the only two pro fights on the card. Right. All the other fights on the card were amateur. Right. So you were at heavyweight against Steve Matthews. It, it says here, rear naked choke. That was not a rear naked choke. I think it was a very technical rear guy. naked I think it was a very technical <laughs> rear naked choke. I think my black belt skill came out. Mate, so the poor guy was fucking, what was he? Six foot four, six foot five? Yeah, he was a he big was a boy. big dude. He was a big boy. He wasn't very good though. Not he wasn't horrible. great, no. no. But, yeah, but what, but did you, know, what did you do? Did you inside low kick him or something? I anyway, I remember he was like on a handbag knees. from back here. <laughs> Tongue was out. Of course it was. Feet off the floor. <laughs> swung that shit. Oh, honestly. Missed. <laughs> but, well, the, the, the photo that I remember seeing of it is mm. Steve, Steve Matthews on his knees, like 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 standing up on his knees, and you're just face barring him, and you're just standing behind him like that, yeah. fucking cranking his face. Yeah, yeah. Horrific, man. It's Brilliant. embarrassing. Man. And I thought Andy Walker on that card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those tricks in nice that fight against a mate on that one. We had some... Uh, Good nights on that quest. We did, yeah. yeah Sammy Berry the up there, rushed in, Danny rushed in yeah, as well. Danny yeah, some good nights up there, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. yeah. Still smoking at ringside. Hey, Still smoking at cage side, yeah. Smoke everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Smoking, smoking at cage. We're fucking old, man. Wait, uh, yeah. What's that? That's we are. Man, I fought for a Thai boxing world title in that arena. I didn't come to it, but I remember you doing remember? it. Remember? Yeah, I remember you doing fucking it. Fucking called me up like day before 24, the event. 24 hours before yeah. you went up, yeah, and he was, he was top, like, top boy, weren't he? Yeah. They were yeah, like, yeah. oh, he's just sold a bunch of tickets. You know, it's like an exhibition match. Yeah, he played it down to you, I remember, yeah. Yeah, and I got there and it was yeah. a fucking main event for the world main title. Main event for world title. Never saw him weigh in. He was fucking good, wasn't he? Medi, wasn't he? Medi. Uh, yeah, I didn't watch name. it. I didn't come up, did I? But Fucking banger. Five rounder. Broke my nose. Drop you early. Did he drop yeah, you? Yeah. An elbow or something? Or a knee or something? I dropped right? him twice. He dropped me three times. I remember times. it was back and forth. It yeah, was, he yeah. lost the decision, right? Yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good fight, I though. Yeah, yeah. Good fight. I've got it on video somewhere. I remember you coming back with a big smile. Like, hey, I had a great time. Yeah, it was a lo- <laughs> lovely it. time. Loved it. <laughs> fucking big swollen nose. <laughs> Good times, good times. Good times. Okay, we 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 digressed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we drifted then. then. What do you reckon? Then? <laughs> what do you reckon? At, well, I mean, the thing is, well, the point that we're, we're making, I guess, in the long run, is that Volkov's got fucking loads of experience. Loads and loads of experience. The five rounds, the length, 
Made his but debut again, in 2009. Again, he ain't on his way down, is he? But Aspen was on his way up, for sure. I feel like Volkov's one of those kind of... He's a bit of a of an Alistair Overeem kind of fighter. Like, he's good enough to be around for a while. Yeah. Like, you could quite easily see him having... It could know, be a bad night. It could be. could be a it bad night. It could be night. a long, rough night. Because the thing is with Volkov is he's very good at keeping distance and keeping keeping a nice steady pace. Mm. With Gan, Gan was too quick for him in and out, and never sure engaged him. Yeah. Right? But then if you look at, um, like, say when he stopped Walt Harris, he was he was trapping him against the fence, but still making him feel like he was a long way away. He's yeah. very good at fighting mm. tall. So, like, working the body with that mm. front kick and, and like... Aspen Base. was fast though, isn't he? He's, well, he's this fast is the as thing. well. This is the thing. Good he's feet, very, very good quick. movement. I think Aspen was going to knock him out. Yeah, I do. And 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 and, and I mean, it's yeah. just like you go back to the Derek Lewis fight. Like he, like Volkov won the first two rounds, like outpointed him comfortably, and he was cruising in the third round. And yeah. Derek Lewis just went foot on the gas. Yeah, bang. Yeah. Done. If Aspen puts it. I mean, his hands are, are light, isn't they? If he yeah. puts it all together again. Gets him thinking about the takedown. Yeah. Up and down, I mean, put him on the back foot. Don't let him put you back and plod and keep you long in it. Up against yeah. the cage being awkward like he did with uh, like Harris, like you said, in it. Don't let don't let that happen. Get your break on, retake the centre, stay twitchy, push him back, parry the, you know, clear the kicks, counter strike, wrestling him up and down. Yeah. See, that's a concern of mine, is him clearing the kicks. What reaching a yeah. bit? What coming do, out? Yeah, because yeah. I do think yeah. they're gonna bother him. Yeah. Because the thing is Volkov is very kind of like he's very good kind of flicking that high kick from mm. like a question mark kick. And and if he notices that Aspinall's trying to pressure forward yeah. and that kick's bothering him and he's starting to sweep it, he's just got to Aspinall's yeah, yeah. got to be here. His line. Got to be here. He's got to be constantly changing line and, and edging edging that front foot on in mm. the process, or crossing his feet to get to him quick to cover that 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 range yeah. um, advantage in it. Yeah. What what do you what do you do if you're Aspinall and you knock him down? Do you wait and let him stand up, or do you run into his guard and try and finish? How sharp is Volkov's guard? He's got some. He's got, got some. Subs. Other, he's got some there. some triangles. I mean, he's got a couple of rear naked choke finishes. Just make sure you're yeah. passing, isn't it? Just make Not sure you're passing. Control, subs. stack him up Three. on his shoulders, punch hard through, set that guard. Make sure you're passing to side, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, backstroke, clear them, clear them ankles, get to side control. Yeah, knee on belly, elbow is facing, or get to mount and work from there, isn't it? So Aspinall's got a couple of losses on his record. Has he been subbed? A uh, heel hook early on. Bama. Bama 21. You must have been on that card, eh? 2015? Bama 21. Where's that? Uh, Birmingham. His first loss. Still, I was saying, still Austin. Birmingham. used to do brother with his... Uh, Mike Grundy was on that card with his brother. Well. Oh, is that right? Oh, the Hawk. No, Devant. Cohen. Cohen. Eh? No, I don't think I was on that one. No, I wasn't on that one. No. Is, is, uh, so that, was been... after, that was after me, mate. Was it? Yeah. That was after my little Bama stint. <laughs> Live on Channel Five. Yeah. Yeah, Austin. Yeah, yeah. So that's a heel hook loss. I don't. Second I don't round. think he's. Yeah. yeah I mean. Yeah. It, it, I, I, it, yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. It is a while ago. I think. It, I mean, Tom's a good grappler. He's. He's gonna be. It's gonna be all about catching him with that. With that big shot over the top. He has been training with some taller guys as well. I saw he's yeah. brought in a really tall kickboxer to spar with. Yeah. So he's clearly. Uh, no, he's gonna come in super prepared for it. Yeah. Again. Five rounds though, isn't it? That's the question. Yeah. Opportunity is knocking here far away, is he? I'll tell you what we need to drop in here is that the leg break. You didn't see it, did you? Oh, no. You said Against you know, yeah. Bukachu. Oh, no. Oh, man. It was bad. I think I did at the time. I can't remember because I've got CTE. Off to what? Yeah, we'll drop yeah. it. We'll, well, we'll, yeah, let's let's put a disclaimer in. Right now, we're going to show you this clip. If you don't like leg breaks, then turn away right now. But this was a clip that Jamie got from outside of the cage at Cage Warriors in uh, Tom Aspinall's uh, second to last fight before he joined the UFC. First round, Bukachu threw a kick. Aspinall shin checked it and just this when Jamie just vomed in his mouth, obliterated, <laughs> sick in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, all down the back of the camera. <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, bad. He, he's a very, very good fighter, Tom Aspinall. Mm. Is. There's a massive, a massive experience disadvantage here, and I, my question is, what happens when it's third round, fourth round, fifth round? This is the question. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, the thing is, if you listen to Aspinall, the way he talks is it's like, I, I want that test. Yeah, yeah. I, want, I need someone to try and push me because he's go, he's running through guys. Yeah, he's on his way to like, the top, isn't I mean, he, for sure. And it's, it's only been Arlovsky that's been able to push me into the second round in the UFC. Yeah. You know? I think, again, but think, why though? Yeah, yeah. Because the yeah. experience. Because the experience. Because the experience, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But then when he thought, fuck it, and just went for it, he, yeah. <laughs> he walked through yeah, him. Yeah. He walked through him in that. When he, he got re- a finish in that, in that fight, didn't he? Yeah. 
just jumped, just just. I mean, if he goes out with that and just goes after Volkov, and he might, might could put him away early, maybe. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah he, he could. He, he could. Got some power in his hands, man. He has. I'm, Why's I'm my torch with, on? Uh, I put my torch on. Oh, I hope. Oh, I'm going with the. Uh, I'm going with with Aspinall. Quite obviously, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think he's going to stop him. I think it's going to be a, a wicked night for him. I think he's going to catch him with a big overhand, knock him down, TKO him up against the fence. If it happens, if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, you. Otherwise, he'll be it, fighting Martin Tabora, and he'll batter him. Which, yeah, which is an equally tough fight. Not yeah. quite as. Uh, not Ooh, quite belly as, rumbling. Well, Sorry about my belly. It's all right, <laughs> right mate. We're, we're wrapping now. You can go and get some food. I'm, I'm sure V's got. Hot dog you talking about hot dog? What? Hot, hot dog in a dump, and I'll be what's sad. Your, <laughs> what's your hot dog obsession? I like things like that shape, innit? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be going Greg's or something. Nah, man. That's nah, your number nah, one sponsor. No, I tell you no, what. No, I'm, no, I'm on a diet, man. I've been good. I, my belly's rumbling because I had cheat meal last night. I had Chinese. My mum gave me did a birthday cake. What did you get? What else? Singapore fried rice, chicken curry, oh, shredded yeah. beef, yeah. salt and chili chips. Lovely. Lovely. Very nice. Lovely. It was yeah, lovely, it nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But no, 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 I don't know Greg's sponsorship. I'm too no. fat, man. You say that, but... I'll have, the thing I'll is have it... it. Greg's, I'll have it. Go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you, honestly, you ask any of the boys down the gym, you're like, okay, what's your ideal sponsor? They're like, Greg's. Yeah, Greg's. 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 You know, he sponsored Team Roughhouse. <laughs> you're missing out. Well, you never know who's going to be listening to the Isn't podcast. It, like, it if you work at Greg's head office, if Greg's has a head office... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smells like sausage rolls all day, imagine. I'd love to work there. Yeah, would you? You'd be massive. I'd be massive. Massive off. <laughs> <laughs> Even massive off. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Good card. What's yeah, your, what's your pick card. for fight of the night? Ooh, fight of the night, fight of the night. I think it could be Alan Hooky, you know. You reckon, yeah. Could be. Yeah. So have one Three quick, round banger, bloody one. Let me have one quick glance. Yeah, here's the card. Yeah. Oh, my belly, man. Oh, mate. You need oh. a dog. What do you reckon? Craig Cro- uh Quarrel could be good, isn't it? Yeah, it could be. Mm. It could be. I just, I just, unless unless Paul Craig's got some confidence in his striking, it might be a bit one sided on the feet. Might... Wood, Wood could be explosive. Wood, he's always. Yeah, I think Jack Shaw keep discipline to make to make it too much to make it too much of a barn burner. I hope he does. Yeah, I hope he does. Uh, in that McCann one. will get the crowd on the feet. I think Grundy uh, and McCann will be fun. Yeah. Again, Mikhaev, I think he's too disciplined to like, make it too crazy. Mm-hmm. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Craig Krolov, maybe. Pimlet will be excited White Lass. Yeah, I reckon he's going to sub him. Yeah. But I think, I think Alan, uh, excuse me, Arnold Allen Hooker, fight, fight of the, the night. night. Yeah, good pick. I reckon. Yeah, I reckon so. That's a good pick. Fight yeah. of the night. Be a banger. Yeah. UFC London. Love it. Always. Mm. Right. Quick shout out to the sponsors. Unbound Merino. Uh, UnboundMerino.com. And uh, the code is OUTLAW and you get 15% off. And uh, if you spend over $100, you will get free shipping in North America. And our other sponsor is XBrain, xbrain.co.uk. Um, if you use the code OUTLAW, you'll get 20% off. And that is all on it supplements, all XBrain supplements, the Neuroptimax supplements. There's loads and loads of stuff on there. Any proteins that you need, you're on it. Really good. And if you get itchy bum or be to alanine, <laughs> don't worry because my arsehole was really good. Is it all right? It yeah. feels like, like for a second, I had a little bit of itchy cheek. Yeah. I felt like I was red, but my arsehole never got itchy. That was so just this, nerves. Is a real, this is a real good product. That was just nerves because you didn't have some, I'm going to ask for some more of this. Yeah. It's yeah. good stuff, isn't it? It's yeah. good stuff. I use the pre workout every day. Rate it. A bit of creatine. I feel yeah, like I'm really buzzing. <laughs> all right. Thanks Beautiful. for joining us. Nice Thanks, one, guys. Jimmy. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Catch Cheers, you next guys. time. Thank you.